magazine, The Do-It-Yourself Column. The article I'd like to talk about is Kit Carson's messenger pouch. Kit Carson inspired a lot of us to get into this to begin with, and you can read about his exploits and, and some of his mountain man days, but it's a little known fact that Kit also carried messages back in the 1840s and 1850s. Uh, he worked with Fremont and, and President Polk, and in August 2012, Manitou Galleries in Santa Fe auctioned off Chris, Kit Carson's original messenger pouch. And this is a copy of it that I made from the photographs in their auction catalog. It's pretty fancy. It takes a lot of uh, stitch work and a lot of time, but all you need is some simple tools, some vegetable tan leather, and you can make one of these for yourself. Laying out the stitches is the hardest part for the decorations, and that's what I'd like to show you how to do. First you need to dampen up your leather. Don't get it wringing wet. Don't get it half dry. You want it damp so it's uniformly a different color. Once vegetable tan leather is damp, it has a memory. That means that it'll take an impression of any tool you use to put that impression in it and it'll stay there. We use that to lay out things like the edge where we want a row of stitches to go. I just use a simple wing divider so you can set them to any distance you want. And just press right down into the leather and those marks will stay. I also use a simple modeling stylus like this one to draw in any designs I'd like. For instance I'm working on a flower petal and starbursts. I just draw those in and the design stays right into the leather. Once the design's in, with a simple diamond blade at all, I poke in the stitch holes. That's the hard part is trying to estimate where these holes need to go so everything looks nice and stays even. Best way to do that is to poke in hole where the stitch row is going to start, poke another hole where the stitch row is going to end. Once you have those two holes, simply divide that distance in half by eye. I'll do that for all the legs of this star. Once those are divided in half, divide them in half again. After that, just come back and carefully put another hole in between all your holes. If it looks like one's going to be too close, just leave it out. It doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, Kit's wasn't perfect by any means when you take a good look at it. All you're trying to do is get the holes spaced as evenly and as nicely as you can. Again, start at the at one end of where your stitches is going to be, poke another hole at the other end. Then divide those runs in half, poke holes in in half again. Working by eye, you don't need to lay this out with a tool or measuring wheel unless you want to. Even if you were to do that, odds are it wouldn't end right where you wanted it to anyway. So you'd have to fudge these stitches no matter what. Just do your best. Simply divide and divide again. Putting holes in the middle every time. And they're going to work themselves out and end up a lot nicer than you might think. Especially when you come back and fill it in with your stitches. To do that, all you need is a, two harness needles, 
some heavy linen cord that's been waxed and just saddle stitch between every one of these holes to fill in the patterns. Now you can use this technique to put anything you want into the leather. You can put numbers, letters, dates, names, designs. You can do Pennsylvania Dutch folk art. You can do sawtooth geometry and scallops and flowers. Anything you want. Or you can base it off an original like I'm doing here with the Kit Carson pouch. Well, I'll just keep poking away here. And that's really all there is to it. Don't be afraid to try it yourself. And if you want to follow along and make one of these Kit Carson messenger pouches for yourself, it'll be in Muzzleloader Magazine. Thanks a lot.